Over the past few years, as many of you know, I have become addicted to ultralight fishing. Now, I love ultralight fishing because it gives me the ability to catch numerous species of fish all on the same piece of equipment, but in addition to that, every single one of those fish fights harder. Bluegill this big, pike this big, it doesn't really matter. If you catch them on an ultralight rod, it's pretty much always gonna be a good time. Now, the other thing that I've been doing over these last few years is I've been experimenting with a lot of techniques. And today I wanted to share with you five ultralight techniques that I think all anglers should know. If you become an expert of these five techniques, I think you will very rarely skunk because they pretty much cover down on everything you need as an angler. Now I'm gonna start with my least thrown technique out of these five, and then I'm gonna move up to my most thrown technique out of these five. But like I said, I really think it's important to have all five in the arsenal, because if you do, you will basically be set up for any situation across all four seasons. So with that being said, let's get started. Number five, the float rig. Now, just to clarify, when I say float rig, I essentially mean any technique utilizing a float or a cork or a bobber, whatever you wanna call it, these are classic right here. We've probably all caught a fish underneath one of these little red and white circle bobbers, but it can become more advanced than that. Essentially what's beautiful about these techniques is it gives you the ability to present a bait vertically without having to be right on top of the fish. So first example, you've got a slip float. Now, if you've been watching my recent videos, you've seen me utilize this, but that's a bobber stop right there. And what's beautiful about this rig is when you have that slip float and you've got that bobber stop, that stops it exactly where you set that bobber stop. So you can fish really deep water with something like this, but present your bait exactly at the depth that you want it to go. So as an example, if you were fishing in 30 foot of water, but you see there's a school of fish 10 feet down, you can set this bobber stop at 10 feet and cast out your jig and then have that jig hovering right in the middle of those fish. A lot of crappie anglers, a lot of bluegill anglers utilize these techniques right here. And I can tell you this one is tried and true. You can't really go wrong with this little technique right here. Um, the next one that I like as well is a peg float. Now I like the peg float a little bit more for shallow water, especially in streams and creeks when I'm trying to present something really small and have it just tick along the bottom. The peg float, you basically pull this little peg out and then you can set your float exactly where you want it. So it's quick to adjust. So um, the slip float is also quick to adjust, but I find that with a slip float, you need to use a little bit heavier gear to get it to ride properly. Whereas a peg float, you, know, you can use pretty light stuff. So I find that this is really effective when I'm trout fishing. It's very, very similar to utilizing a strike indicator with like a nymph or something um, when it comes to fly fishing. This is basically fly fishing with ultralight. So you could honestly fish with flies underneath this and catch a lot of trout doing so. But those are the two ways that I rig a float um, because they really cover down on all the situations I need. Whether I'm fishing deeper water for panfish or I'm fishing shallow water for trout, creek chuds, or other, you know, creek panfish, whatever it may be, these two techniques right here are great, especially for cold water. Now let's move on. Number four, ultralight jerkbait. When the fish are smashing one of these, I can tell you with confidence that you're gonna have a blast on the water. These things right here are so unique because they are one of the few techniques with ultralight that you can fish really aggressively with. I love little ultralight jerk baits when it's windy conditions because a lot of times with other techniques, you have to be a little bit more slow and methodical and it's just a little bit harder to utilize those other techniques when there's a lot of wind blowing. So an ultralight jerk bait, it gives you the opportunity to keep moving your bait and fish a little bit more aggressively. So basically anytime the fish are aggressive and chasing bait, a lot of times in the wind, um, this thing comes out of my box and I start chucking it around. Now what's beautiful about one of these is they actually come available in three different options. You can get them in sinking models, you can get them in floating models, and then you can get them in suspending models. So depending on the conditions for you, I would choose accordingly. Now I've got some of all types, but essentially I usually use a floating model because I fish a lot of shallower water around grass. I don't want a sinking model because if I'm fishing over a weed bed and it sinks down in there, it's going to snag up a lot of times. So a floating model can come down to the weeds and then it'll float back up come down to the weeds, it'll float back up. So for me, floating tends to be great, but if you're fishing a lot of deep, clear water and you wanna count it down to the depth the fish are sitting at, a sinking model can be great. Ultimately, there's an option for everyone. Now, the other thing I wanted to mention is, 
These all pretty much come stock with a split ring on the front, but a lot of people also choose to do a loop knot for them um, if they don't have a split ring or if they just want a little bit more action because the loop knot gives it a little bit more free ability to kind of slash back and forth. So I'll show you how to tie one of those right now. Today I will be demonstrating on a Rapala Original Floater. The loop knot is pretty simple. You start by forming a loop. Just like you're tying an overhand knot, you're going to just bring that tag in right through your loop, and then you're going to start to tighten it down. You don't want to make it too big of a loop. I like to tighten it down to a very small little loop. Big enough to where you can still work with, though. You then take the tag in and run it through the uh, eyelet of your lure, and then you pinch that loop with your finger, and you go ahead and wrap it back around your main line. I usually go four or five times, and then I will go ahead and push the tag end back through the loop that I already formed. Now, you have to kind of take a little practice here, and you kind of have to pinch all the line at the same time, but then you run it back through the top loop that is formed as you start to cinch it down. And then once you do that, it's actually pretty simple. You just kind of keep things steady and you go ahead and tighten down both your tag end as well as your main line and you're going to form your knot. As you can see, I made a little bit too large of a loop knot there, but for demonstration purposes, it works. Ultimately, it doesn't really matter what knot you tie. You can pretty much fish it the same way, whether you're tying to the split ring or with a loop knot. I just wanted to share it with you because it has been something that came in handy for me in the past. The other thing is there's lots of good brands out there, but some of my favorite ones would be Rapala, Yozuri, as well as Rebel. Um, these are all tried and true brands, and I just I have a lot of them in my box, but there's probably lots of other good ones out there, so feel free to experiment and let me know if you find something that you like, and uh, I might just do some more experimenting and pick some up. Number three, micro drop shot. I used to be a hardcore bass fisherman, fished a lot of tournaments, and it's funny because a drop shot was always one of my best friends as an angler. I was super confident in this rig. Well, what I've realized is that an ultralight version of it can be just as effective for other species as well. This rig is really simple to tie. All you have to do is tie a polymer knot to your hook, leave a long tag end, and then attach a weight. What's beautiful about this is it gives you the ability to hover a bait right off the bottom and basically fish nice and slow. I love to fish these in deep water, but you can fish them in shallow water as well. Personally, I love about an eighth ounce weight in most cases. Um, it seems to be very versatile and I have a lot of confidence in it, but you can choose one that you know feels right for you. I also have found that this Hayabusa finesse drop shot hook in a size eight is really good for like bluegill and whatnot. You can obviously adjust the size of your hook based on what species you plan to catch, but this one's been really good for me with regards to ultralight fishing. As far as rod and reel goes, you can pretty much fish it on any ultralight rod and reel that you want, but I have found that a little bit longer rod is something that I like because it gives me the ability to move that line if I'm fishing deep water. So in this case, I've got it rigged up with a seven foot ultralight. All in all, this technique right here continues to grow on me, and I think that as I fish more deep water, this is going to continue to be you know, thrown more and more often, but this is definitely one I would highly, highly recommend um, for all anglers. Number two, double jig rig. You've been seeing me fish with this rig a lot more recently, and quite honestly, the more I fish it, the more I love it. The double jig rig is awesome because it gives me the ability to experiment with bait size and color and quickly determine what they're going to be eating that day. If you can just cut down on a few minutes of determining what color they like best, that will result in a lot more fish. So I really, really like that. The other thing I love about this rig is it gives you the ability to basically mimic a school of bait fish. That is virtually impossible with any other rig as far as ultralight goes. If you're a bass fisherman and you throw an Alabama rig, you can mimic a big school of bait fish, but that is so heavy and there's really nothing like it for ultralight fishermen besides the double jig rig. So I've really, really liked that and I honestly have a lot of confidence that it has drawn a lot of fish to me because they think that there's numerous bait fish in the area. If you fish a single jig, that's fine, but it doesn't necessarily give them the appeal of numerous moving through the water column. Um, as far as how to tie it goes, I've found a knot that I like, which is right here. The reason I like this knot is because it's really simple. All you gotta do is run your line through your first jig and make sure to leave a nice long tag end. Once you have that set up, just double your line over and form a loop. 
And then once the loop is formed, all you gotta do is run that jig through the loop three times before cinching it down. Now you wanna make sure you kinda of pinch that line and keep it tight to the jig. But what's beautiful about this is that it forms a little bit of a loop knot and it keeps your jig off your main line, which I actually think gives it better action. And then with the other tag end, you can go ahead and just tie your favorite knot. Polymer knot, uni knot, doesn't really matter. And then once you have that one tied, you're ready to rock and roll. Go catch a fish. There's other knots available out there. Feel free to find one that works best for you, but I've had no issues with mine, so I'm gonna keep tying it that way. The other thing I wanted to mention is how to fish it. What I think is awesome about this rig is I've found there's really no wrong way to fish it. I have fished it aggressively over shallow water and I've caught fish. I've fished it slower over deep water and I've caught fish. Typically, a lot of people fish it for crappie with heavier jigs, but what I've found is light jigs fished shallower and fished more of a horizontal approach works just as well. I am experimenting with this more and more every time I fish it, but all in all, I think this is just a dynamite rig, and I pretty much have one rigged up at all times now. Number one, jig and plastic. So I know we just talked about a double jig rig, but even better than that is a single jig in plastic. Now, I know that's obviously a very broad term, but what I mean when I say a jig in plastic is a small ultralight jig, anywhere from 1 80th of an ounce all the way up to like a quarter of an ounce, and then a small plastic, usually less than three inches long. The beauty of a little ultralight jig is the fact that it's extremely versatile and you can basically catch fish in all conditions. I've caught fish in the dead of winter. I've caught fish all through the summer, spring, fall. It doesn't matter. Honestly, an ultralight jig in plastic accounts for probably 90% of my fish catches on ultralight. Now, as far as choosing a plastic goes, I would say pick something that is going to mimic the local forage for you. Personally, I fish a lot of minnow shapes and a lot of insect shapes because that tends to be the primary forage for a lot of the fish in my area. But let's say, for example, you're fishing a body of water that has a lot of small crayfish. You might choose something that looks like a small crayfish because that might actually work even better for you. The other thing is I like to have numerous colors available because what I've found with ultralight fishing is some days they're crushing chartreuse, some days they're crushing pinks and purples, some days they're crushing white or black, the list goes on. Ultimately, colors can certainly make an impact and that's part of the reason I love the double jig rig is because you can use two colors, hone in which one they like better, and you can either keep fishing a double jig rig with two of that one color or you can just fish a single jig with that color. And sometimes a single jig draws a lot more bites and sometimes the double jig rig draws a lot more bites. And that, my friends, is exactly why it's important to have numerous in your arsenal. The other thing is by now you probably realize that I own mule fishing. So I'm obviously biased when I tell you that I like mule jigs and I like the plastics offered by mule, but I will obviously not be so biased and tell you that there's not other great options out there as well. Bobby Garland, Gulp Minnows, the list goes on. There's so many great plastics out there. And personally, I have a variety of options and I would recommend you have a variety ready to go as well because I feel like if you have a variety, you're usually going to have something ready to go that's going to put you in the position to catch more fish. Okay, so that pretty much wraps it up. In conclusion, if you master these five techniques, I genuinely think you are going to catch a lot more fish. If you have any questions about any of these techniques or other techniques, drop a comment below. Otherwise, stay Stay tuned for this year because I am going to fish all of these techniques and more. So if you love ultralight fishing, make sure to click subscribe. Thank you so very much for watching. We'll catch you next time.